All right, here's another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're talking about MIG welding again, and we're going to be talking about the differences between pulling and pushing on short circuit transfer and also the differences between short circuit and spray. If you hadn't been exposed to spray transfer, which if you hadn't been in a heavy industrial setting, you may not have ever uh, used spray transfer. So we're going to clear up a little bit of the misunderstandings on that today. What we're looking at here is short circuit transfer. This is used for general fabrication. It's, uh, it's probably the most versatile kind of MIG welding because you can weld sheet metal thicknesses way down thin all the way up to really pretty, pretty beefy stuff. We're using a Millermatic 250X today and we're going to start by uh, kind of using the settings on the inside of the panel as a starting point. Now those settings are always just a starting point. You always have to tweak it from there. All machines are a little bit different because the wire feed speed motors aren't calibrated perfectly and so you know you, you, you take a stab at the settings and then you go from there. 19 volts 295 inches a minute and that the wire feed speed was a little high. It was kind of stubbing in the puddle, kind of humping up a little bit, so I trimmed it back to 245 inches a minute, and it was a little more livable. Still biting in pretty good through that hot rolled mill scale, and uh, giving me a pretty decent looking weld. One more look at that pulling at 245 inches a minute. I'm using 035 wire, E70S6, and uh, 7525 Argon CO2 kept the settings to the same at 245 inches just pushing it this time now you see I'm cutting that corner off on the bottom you don't really want to do that you want to just come to the corner on a lap joint I'm kinda of messing up here a little bit because I can't see the weld all that all that good the camera in the way but uh, you just want to nip the corner not really melt it off on lap joints And if you do nip it off it ain't the end of the world I'm just telling you boy to make it look better alright here I cranked it up a lot higher just to show you that short circuit's not always a cold well. You can crank this baby up. This is 21, around 21 volts, 310 inches a minute, good and hot for quarter inch, cutting right through that hot rolled mill scale, giving me a good, good looking weld. I'm going to spray now. To go to spray, you got to go hotter and you got to change the gas. So I'm using 9010 Argon CO2 gas here, and you notice the difference in the sound. Whoop, slipped off, screwed the pooch slip completely off the weld. Let's do it again. Alright, different sound here. It's a hum instead of bacon frying. It's a hot weld. You can see how much brighter it is given the camera fits. But it's a really hot weld. It's good for high production and fairly, it's got the metal's got to be fairly thick and it's only good for uh, flat and horizontal type welds. You're not going to do much overhead and you're certainly not going to do any vertical uphill and you're not going to do any sheet metal thicknesses with spray transfer. Uh, not very thin anyway. 25 volts, 354 inches a minute. Okay, this is a cross section. Sliced and diced and polished and etched so you can see the weld nugget. The pulling is on the top, the pushing is on the bottom. You can see the pulling yielded a little deeper penetration. That could have just been my technique. But there's not a difference between night and day here like some people say. Pushing versus pulling on short circuit. Both are good. All right, this is the pushing with the spray transfer. At least see that deep, deep spiked penetration down in the root? That's pretty typical of spray transfer. It's fast, it's hot. It would kill the duty cycle on that little machine if I did it all day long, but I only welded a few inches of it. All right, got plenty of long sleeve t shirts in. Let's get them, folks. It's cold outside. Thanks for watching WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.